I've got 50 tips that every player needs to know whether you're new to the game or you've been playing for years. Let's start with some core gameplay tips. Auto aim is a really great tool to use while you're learning the game, but you will eventually learn that longer range brawlers are typically better and are much more effective if you're good at manually aiming. If you do manually aim your ability and you decide that you don't want to use it, you can drag it back to the center of your joystick and release your finger without activating the ability. If you're playing with haptic feedback on in your settings, your device will vibrate to let you know that it's safe to let go. Obviously, this doesn't work on devices like tablets that might not have vibrations. Now this is especially useful to use with your super. By pretending to activate your super, the blue ring around your brawler will become yellow, which all players can see. If you have a yellow ring around you, sometimes your enemies will be afraid of your super and will fall back without even having to use your super, which can then allow your team to push them back. Now you can tell if a brawler has a gadget equipped if they have this icon under their brawler. This is a great way to know if enemies are at least power 7 or higher. You can tell if they have a star power equipped if there is a star symbol underneath their brawler as well, and this tells you if they are power 9 or higher. If an enemy is power 10 and only has one gear equipped, they will gain this icon to the side of the gadget, and if they're power 11 with two gears equipped, they will gain a second gear next to the gadget as well. Being aware of how leveled up your opponents are will help you know whether you need to play more cautiously or if you can afford to be a little aggressive. Now, if an enemy gear is actively being used somehow, you'll know because it will actually start glowing. Also, some gadgets affect the next attack or super that a brawler will make, and you will know if one of these gadgets have been activated because a brawler will get a glowing halo above their head. This can be seen by all players, so if you want to use this type of a gadget, it's usually best to activate it right before you attack. Now, if you activate a gadget like this and you die before using it, you will lose one of the gadget uses, so you want to make sure you have plenty of HP when you activate gadgets like this. Now, most enemies only have three ammo. If you keep track of how many ammo they've used, you can actually catch them when they're low on ammo and unable to fire back at you. This is especially especially useful at countering brawlers with slower reload speeds. When you enter into a bush or are invisible for some other reason, enemies won't be able to see you unless they're within two tiles of you in any direction. Players can see into bushes on opposite sides of walls though, so if you're trying to hide, it's a good idea to stay at least one tile away from the wall. If you are hidden and you see a little eye icon pop up next to your brawler, that is notifying you that you are visible to enemies. However, the eye icon does not appear if an enemy has a vision gear or if Bo is using his circling eagle star power to see you, so keep that in mind. Obviously, it's a good idea to check bushes so you don't get caught off guard, especially when you're playing showdown. But if an enemy has recently walked into the bush, you might not have to check that bush because there will be little footsteps entering into the bush. These little footsteps can also be used to track the direction that enemies are moving outside of the range of what you can actually see on your screen. Just keep in mind that these footsteps do disappear over time. If a brawler is tinted purple, that means that they have some sort of damage boost. If a brawler is tinted blue, that means that their movements have been slowed. If a brawler is green or they're on fire, that means they are taking damage over time. And if a brawler is tinted red, that means that their reload speed is increased. One thing to note about buffs is that speed buffs do not stack. The game just gives you the highest speed buff at that time. However, damage buffs do stack. There are three ways to heal in Brawl Stars. One is through healing abilities. Second is by standing on a healing pad. But the most important is natural healing. This happens when you have not acted Activated any abilities or taken any damage for a few seconds. It's almost always better to fall back and heal than it is to die and have to respawn because that actually allows enemies to control more of the map. So you want to use this natural healing as much as possible. Now let's cover some important progression tips. You should almost never buy gadgets and star powers with gold. As long as you have one brawler who is either missing their gadget or star power and are level high enough where they could have it, there's a small chance that you'll get them for free in brawl boxes. Now this chance is small, but it's big enough that you will unlock every gadget and star power for free long before your account is actually fully maxed. This will save you tons of gold, which will actually help you reach a max out account much faster. One way to get some spare tokens that a lot of people miss out on is playing the candidates of the day in the map maker at least three times a day. You get free tokens for the three maps that you vote on each day, and if you don't play map maker frequently, it's easy to forget. You'll also want to at least log in and claim your free tokens every day by tapping on the new maps every time they switch. The different modes are on a different time cycle, but they refresh at least once every 24 hours. More important than that, though, is to make the daily quests a big priority every day. They're only available every 24 hours, and they give more free progression for the time required to do them than any other activity in the game. As for your longer quests, you might have a quest that is taking a really long time to do. If that's the case, you can actually save a lot of them for special events on the weekend. You can deal tons of damage with any brawler in boss fight, or defeat tons of brawlers if you end up being the boss in 
in big game. Other than daily quests though and special quests, most of your quests won't go away until the end of the season, so there's plenty of time to get them done as easily as possible. Aside from completing all of your quests, the next most rewarding way to spend your time is by joining a club and participating in Club League. Even if your club isn't super competitive or maybe not even very active, this is a great way to boost your progression with club coins. And the best way to spend those club coins is on power points. Because of how power points eventually get converted to gold once you have max power points, buying gold is actually not efficient in the long run. As for your gems, whether your goal is to have a max out account or to have as many cosmetics as possible, the absolute best place to spend your gems is in the Brawl Pass. Now, if there is a specific skin for your favorite brawler that you really want to spend gems on, there's absolutely no shame in that. But if you save all of your gems, you'll be able to buy every other Brawl Pass for free, which is just an insane amount of progression to pass up, in addition to skins, pins, and other cosmetics. Now, when it comes to star points, they're mostly used for cosmetics, but at the end of each season and sometimes at the end of challenges, there will be offers for Brawl Boxes with those star points that you won't want to miss out on. Just make sure you always have at least 6,000 star points at all times so you don't miss out. Now, there are two significant ways to get more star points. The first is to get as high as you can in Power League each season. The game uses your best rank, so you don't even have to worry about ending the season if you happen to move down before it resets. The second major way to get star points is to push your brawlers as high as you can each season. Once you reach 525 trophies on a brawler, their trophies get reset lower at the end of each season, and you get star points depending on how high you push them. It's a good idea to push each brawler at least one trophy each season after you reach 525 trophies, so your progression doesn't actually get reset. Now, if you're pushing all of your brawlers as high as you can, the amount of trophies that you earn and lose changes every 100 trophies. That means that the most efficient way to increase your total trophy count is to get 100 trophies with one brawler and then move on to the next brawler and repeat the process. Now, not all brawlers are all good in every map or mode or at any given time. If you can't seem to win very much with a certain brawler, try playing them in a different mode or wait to push them until they're leveled up a little bit higher. If they're maxed out and you're still struggling to push trophies, maybe try a different brawler instead. Now, if you're wanting more tips on how you can completely max out your account as fast as possible, I recommend watching this video right here after you finish watching this one. For now though, let's cover some game mode specific tips. In Brawl Ball, there is a minimum distance that players have to be in order for you to pass the ball to them. If you are too close to them, the ball will kick right through them. This means that if you're close enough to a defending enemy, you can actually kick the ball right through them and make a goal and they won't be able to block your shot. This is really great for situations where you're not sure if you'll be able to survive long enough to walk the ball into the goal. Also, keep this in mind when you're defending not to get too close to an enemy brawler with a ball. Now, whenever you kick the brawl ball, it consumes either your ammo or your super if you happen to use a super kick. There are two ways that you can actually really abuse this. The first is to send the ball to whichever teammate has the fastest reload speed, since passing the ball isn't going to be a big deal to them. The second is to purposefully kick the ball to enemies with slow reload speeds so that passing the ball makes a big Big impact on them. Also, if you can time it just right, kicking a ball to an enemy who has their super lit up and making them waste their super is really satisfying. Now, when it comes to knockout, if your teammates get killed and you are alone facing three enemies, it's actually usually just better to run into the smoke and die. If you don't do that, they will very likely charge their supers off of you, which will give them an advantage in the next round. This tip only applies if there is guaranteed to be a next round and only if the enemies don't already have their supers charged. Otherwise, you you might as well try to win a 3v1 or your teammates might just end up hating you. In gem grab, at least two gems will spawn during the countdown, so if you're down by only two gems, there's not a need to panic just yet. If you pick up as many gems as the enemy is holding, the countdown timer will actually stop until one team has more gems than the other. Now, a gem spawns every seven seconds, so if a gem spawns within one second of the countdown timer starting, it is possible for you to come back when you're three gems behind. With that said, it's very unlikely so I wouldn't count on it. Another tip for gem grab is that it's almost always best to have one brawler on your team be the one that picks up all of the gems. Sometimes there are emergencies and it doesn't really matter who picks it up as long as they do get picked up, but for the most part, the less divided the gems are on your team, the better. This way, the enemy team has to kill a specific brawler to stop the countdown instead of any of the brawlers on your team. Now, at the start of the bounty match, a blue star will spawn in the center of the map. Picking this up will give you a point, but it's also used as a tiebreaker if both teams have the same score at the end of the match. If a brawler who has the blue star ends up dying, that blue star will transfer to whichever brawler killed them. Now, whenever you get a kill in bounty, the amount of bounty stars above your head goes up by one, which means that if an enemy kills you, then they'll actually get more 
points. You can abuse this in three different ways. The first is to focus on killing enemies with only two stars. Every time you do this, you get two points, but your bounty only goes up by one, which means that in an equal trade where both you and your opponent die, your team gets one additional point. The second way to abuse this is to get as many kills as possible after you reach seven bounty stars. After seven stars, your bounty will no longer go up, and because you get points without increasing your own bounty, each kill puts the enemy team significantly behind your own. This is why if you have a teammate with seven bounty stars, it's better to let them get the finishing kill than to steal the kill from them if you can. Then the third way to abuse this is actually uh, difficult to abuse. It's hard to pull off and it's not always worth it, but it is good to know. If you get a kill while you are dead, but before you respawn, your bounty won't go up, but you'll still get full credit for the kill. This is only possible if you happen to poison somebody and they die from poison while you're dead, or if you have a spawn that kills them, so it's not always feasible. Now in Showdown, players always drop one power cube plus an additional power cube for every three power-ups that they have. This is difficult to use to your advantage in Solo Showdown, but it's useful to know in Duo Showdown because you can pick up your teammates' power cubes if you're close to them when they die. However, it's usually a good idea to wait for your duo teammate to respawn before picking up cubes if you can do so without end up giving them to the enemy team. Now, if your duo does die in Duo Showdown, it takes 15 seconds for a teammate to respawn. Even though they respawn with zero power cubes, two players is better than one, so it's much better to find a way to get safe into a bush or hidden behind a wall rather than engage with the enemies because you'll probably end up getting 2v1, which is always going to put you at a disadvantage. Now in Hot Zone, having multiple teammates on the zone doesn't give you points any faster than having just one person on the zone. So if there are multiple zones, make sure you cover all of them so that your team can win the match as fast as possible. If there's only one zone, you still want to spread out though, because if you're bunched up close to your teammates, it's going to be much easier for the enemy team to actually hit you. This is true in pretty much any game mode in any map against any brawler. Bunching up just isn't a good thing to do. Now here's a tip no matter the game mode or the map. Breaking walls can completely change the map, which also changes the strategy for that map. Before you break any walls, you'll want to consider how opening up the map will affect your teammates as well as the enemy team. As a general rule, it's usually a good idea to break walls on the enemy side of the map and leave them up on your side of the map, but there are definitely exceptions to this rule. Now, tip 50 is to watch this video right here on 47 tips that are even more advanced than the ones I listed in this video. And if you want tips specifically on how to max out your account as fast as possible, I recommend watching this one. Make sure you subscribe for more tips in the future. I would also appreciate you guys using code Kairos and Brawl Stars shop to show your support for this channel. And also leave a comment in the section below if you have any other tips. For now, this is Kairos time ticking by, and we will see you in Brawl Stars.